Chapter 2 An Invitation In 1956, a letter came that changed Jane's Goodall's life. It was from an old school friend named Chloe. Chloe's family had bought a farm in Kenya, Africa. Chloe wanted Jane to visit. Did Jane think twice about going? Of course not. Traveling to Africa was expensive. Living in London was expensive too. So Jane moved back home with her mother in Burnmouth. She saved up enough money for the trip by working as a waitress. Jane was a very good waitress. She could carry as many as 13 plates balanced on her arms. Kenya is right here. On March 30, 13, 1957, Jane's African adventure began. She was turning 23. In England, she boarded a ship that arrived in Kenya three weeks later. From the city of Mombasa, she took a train inland. It was April 3rd, her birthday. After a long drive on dirt roads, Jane reached the farm in time for dinner and birthday cake. That very first day, Jane saw a giraffe. It wasn't in a cage. It was running by the side of the road. She could hardly believe it. What a terrific birthday present that was. Jane knew that she couldn't stay at the farm for more than a few weeks. She was a guest, after all. She didn't want to overstay her welcome. What she needed was a job that would keep her in Africa. Jane was in luck. At a party, she met someone who arranged a meeting between Jane and a famous scientist, Louis Leakey. He and his wife, Mary, were British citizens, but Kenya was their home. Louis Leakey. Louis Leakey was born in August 1903 in Kenya. His parents had been born in Great Britain. They went to Africa to teach Christian religion to the Kayuku tribe. Lewis's very first home was in a tiny hut with a dirt floor. The roof was made of thatch and leaked. Growing up, he felt much more African than British. His friends were all Africans, and when he was a teenager, the Kiyuku people honored him with a membership in their tribe. At 13, Lewis found some stone tools made by early humans. His discovery sparked a lifelong career studying the origins of human beings. Along with his second wife, Mary Leakey, he hunted for fossils of human ancestors. The Leakeys worked in an area called Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Cat, the, cat the time, the country was called Tang, Tanganyika. Besides being a famous fossil hunter, Louis Leakey worked hard to protect the wildlife of Africa. He also helped the careers of two young women <clears throat> who wanted to study wild animals in Africa. One was Jane Goodall. The other was Diane Fossey, who became famous for her work with gorillas. Gorillas in the midst of a movie about Dan Fossey, Diane Fossey, and her work. Louis Leakey died in 1972 while visiting Jane Goodall's mother, Van, in England. At Olduvai Gorge in the plains of East Africa, the Leakeys led groups on digs to find fossils. Not dinosaur fossils, the Leakeys were looking for fossils of the very earliest humans. Most scientists at the time thought that the first humans were from Asia. Lewis believed they were from Africa, and he was right. In 1960, he came upon a fossil of the very early, the very early human species. It came to be known as Homo habilis. Homo habilis lived on Earth from about 2.3 to 1.4 million years ago. It looked more like an ape than like a modern human being. It had a small head and was short <clears throat> and had very long arms. From the moment Louis Leakey met Jane, he liked her. She had a shy manner, but he could tell she was smart and had a spirit of adventure. He offered her a job. Naturally, Jane took it. Jane worked as Leakey's secretary at a museum in the city of Nairobi, Kenya. But right away, Leakey gave her the chance to dig for fossils at Olduvai Gorge. Jane had never done this type of work before. She didn't know anything about digging for fossils. But she was a fast learner. 
For hours every day, Jane picked away at the clay and the rocks with small tools. Sometimes she unearthed the bone of a creature from the distant past. But usually she found nothing. The work was tiring. During the dry season, the Olduvi Gorge was like a desert. Even so, it was a wonderful time for Jane. She wrote that it was wild, untouched Africa. There were all the animals of my childhood dreams. She saw lions and rhinoceros and loads of gazelles. She saw dictics, which are like antelopes the size of a fox terrier. From Lewis Leakey, Jane learned about chimpanzees. <clears throat> Living in the forests of Lake Tangiaka, there were long-haired chimpanzees. Leakey was interested in chimps because he believed that they had much in common with the early humans. Wild chimps are found only in Africa, nowhere else in the world. One study had been done on wild chimps. However, it had lasted for less than three months. Leakey thought that much more time was needed to learn anything important about the chimps. Jane had no experience. This was her first time in Africa. Yet, he believed Jane Goodall was the right person for the job. Jane did too. In July 1960, she moved to the Gombe Stream Game Reserve in what is now the country of Tanzania. First, she met the two African scouts who preceded her protected the area. Then, Jane set off to take a quick look around. Her life's work was about to begin. <laughs>